Page 11, Sailing in the Sun. Look at the piece, let's see what, what's involved. You got two staves, treble and bass clefs, 4-4 four, four time. That's a good start. You look it over and you got a bunch of quarter notes and half notes and quarter rests. I don't see any dotted notes anywhere. But if you look down at the third line in the right hand, we got two notes at the same time. Oh, goody. So let's talk about that. Let's go third line down in the right hand. You're playing a C and an E at the same time. Some people struggle with this, so I'm going to explain it and we'll hope we can get it. When I push a note down, I use the weight of the hand and the arm to actually push the note down. I don't hold it still and try and use fingers. Forget it. That is a technique that used to be used a long time ago and it is more of a harpsichord or clavichord type technique. Piano doesn't work so well. I mean there's times when you sort of have to do it. Forget that. Right now I just focus on letting the weight. So it's like at the beginning you have a C. I can put my hand here. I can raise all. Just put the C, the thumb on the C. And raise the other fingers up off. and. Rather than using the thumb to push it down, lower the whole hand down and let the wrist collapse a little bit. You can do this with every, every finger. And this is how I've been playing all this other stuff. I just didn't say anything. I don't know if, if you noticed my wrist going up and down when I played these notes or not, but it did. And that's how I do this. Well, when you're doing two notes, this comes in really handy because now rather than having one finger down, you got two. So I'm going to put these two fingers down, I'm going to lift the others up, and I'm going to lower the hand. I'm not using the fingers to do it. I'm, the hand is doing it. I'm lowering it here. The trick is, can you play them at the same time? That takes practice. I, I have a terrible time with that. You just have to work at it. The other fingers have to be, you don't raise the other fingers way up because you get tense. We don't want to get tense. That's not it. So just make sure that when you come down, these other fingers are up enough they don't play notes. And you lower the hand and drop the wrist down as you do it. And the third major over, you have a D and an F. That's two and four. So now we're going to use these fingers and the other fingers are up out of the way. It's the same thing. Drop the hand, collapse the wrist a little, and let the hand, the weight play the notes. So whether you're playing one note or multiple notes, I use the same technique. I, it takes a little bit to get used to it, and I would encourage you to give it a try. Another teacher might teach another technique. That's fine. There's more than one way to do this. And if you have multiple teachers over time, like I did, They'll teach you different techniques, and that's fine too. You just do what your teacher is telling you to do, because once you're finished with it, you'll be able to take all that information, if you're still sane, and put it together and make you decide how you're going to do it. So that's what we're doing here. Now you have the slurred lines for legato, like in the third line down. You've got a slurred line between the first two notes. It goes between the staves, so that G... And the, these notes, you're going to connect those. You'd connect them anyway without it, but the point is it's there, so connect them. <clears throat> and you can't connect repeated notes like this on a piano. I mean, there's a way to do it, but that comes later. Right now, you can't connect them. Do the best you can. Just up and down, up and down, up and down. And a big long slur at the last line to connect all those notes together. We have got quarter rests, so we're going to rest. They got a thing up at the top say feel the quarter rests. I sounds dirty to me, but if you want to feel the quarter rest, you go right at it. I, I, it's just rest. Be quiet. You need to feel the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Feel that at least at the beginning of each measure, each count. That one gets a little extra. One, two, three, four. One, two, th feel that. So let's go over it slowly. Starting with the right hand, I do this one hand at a time and then I go back and put them together. So you have a, a middle C and then the left hand plays some notes and you have 
next major, middle C's, and then a D's and D's in the next line you have here. Right. So go through the piece slowly with each hand and make sure you got these notes figured out. In the left hand the beginning, they were your thumb on that B here. Well, you're not in C position, that's down here. Now you're up here. Different position, huh? So it's going to be a B, a G. Make sure you know the names of the notes. And go through the whole thing and play this. And then you put the hands together. It's a one, two, and at first you can forget the rhythm. Just try and get the notes and what's... And then here, and then here, and then here, and then the second line you're up here, and you just work it out. Get the notes. And then once you have the notes, go back and do the rhythm. Count it. What? One, two, three, four, one, two, three. So you got to rest on one because there's a, a rest there. And, the, and you go through the whole thing and make sure you can count it out. If you're having trouble in any spots, any areas, area, you spend more time on those areas to work out the problem. If you don't work out the problem, it won't go away and it'll just be there. And you'll learn it as the piece and it'll always be there. You'll always make the same mistake in the same place every single time. I promise you it works that way. I've seen it. I've done it. So if you're having a problem and working out something, stop and fix it. I'm going to pretend you've done all that. And now you're ready to check your notes with me, the notes and the rhythm. Now I'm not doing dynamics. You do dynamics if you want. It starts out medium loud, and then the third line down, it starts out soft. And at the end of the third line, you have a F for loud. And then in the last line, it goes down a little bit to medium loud. You'll have to decide the difference between loud and medium loud and soft. You, no, it's up to you. But it adds a lot. Do the dynamics, it's important. I just don't really show them too much in here. Now, the third line down, it starts soft, and about the third measure over at the end of the second measure, wherever it says grow louder, <laughs> there's a symbol for that. What they want you to do is start getting a little louder gradually until at the end of the line you're loud. So you have to plan that out. If you don't plan it out, when you start gradually getting louder, you'll be loud within three or four notes. You'll just get, it'll, it'll happen. So plan it out. So in the, in the third line, we're soft. Now we're getting a little louder. A little louder. And the last note on that, that's loud. Don't get loud before that half note. So plan that gradually getting louder out. It's tricky. But that's it. And then in the next one, you immediately come back to medium loud. Go down a little bit. So far. Dynamics can be a real challenge. And in, in my video equipment, unfortunately, it levels out the dynamics. It wants to even them out. So even though I can play different dynamics here, when it comes out at the end, it all sounds about the same. And that's unfortunate. But I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. So I'm dealing with it. So I'm going to give us four counts. Let's play this together. So go ahead and put your hands where they go. Your thumb is here and the right hand, the left hand is here. So your hands are here. Oh, goody. One, two, ready, go. Rest. 